Okay, we have Coach Napier. He's ready for questions. We'll start right here on the front row. You ready on the front row here? Uh, uh, Chris Farbel in KCOU 80.0 FM. Uh, Coach, there's been a lot of talk lately about the Florida-Georgia game. Of course, it's been played in Jacksonville for a long time, but with the potential renovations at TIA Bank Field, there's talk that they might move the game to a home-and-home. And Kirby talked about this yesterday. Kirby talked about the advantage of moving the game home-and-home. Home. Mm -hmm. I just want to know your opinion. Uh, do you have a preference as a program, whether it's a neutral site and it, or it's a home-and-home, and also, is it the Georgia-Florida game or the Florida-Georgia game? That's a great question. We, um, I think the, the, the big thing here to understand, first of all, we've got three more games of the Florida-Georgia game, right? So it's going to be in Jacksonville for three more years. Um, I do think that, you know, when you dig into this thing, obviously I've been asked that question a million times. There, there is definitely an advantage for it to be a home-and-home, home, right? There's no question. It's another recruiting opportunity for your program. And what we all know, Kirby and I both understand, is going to be an unbelievable uh, venue and environment for recruiting. Uh, but there's also economic implications, big picture-wise, for the athletic department in terms of creating revenue, right? So uh, we're going to have three more years in this current dynamic. Um, and then I do believe because of the renovations in Jacksonville, we'll have an opportunity to make the Florida-Georgia game a home and home, right? So that time's coming. In the meantime, uh, the Gators have got a lot of work to do. Right side, second row. Kennedy Wright with CBS 42. In what ways could we see the defense improving under Austin Armstrong? Well, I think that we're all benefiting uh, from being in year two. You know, there's a compound effect of year two. I continue to say that. Um, you know, one of the things that I think maybe gets overlooked is all the defensive assistance that we had in place, we've retained. Um, We've restructured our staff a little bit in terms of responsibilities, but each one of the assistant coaches on defense had never worked in our blueprint, right? They'd never been around this kind of tree in terms of how we operate and how we do things. So not only is Austin hitting the ground running because he's worked with us in the past at Louisiana, he worked with Kirby at the University of Georgia, uh, but the people around him are in year two. The teacher is teaching the material for the second time. Not only is the student learning the material for the second time, the teacher is teaching the material for the second time. So all parts of our process, you know, our eight stage off season program, uh, we continue to get better at. And I think that defensively we'll benefit from that, that whole process. Left side, second row. Hey, Coach, Ben Bobick, Local 3 News in Chattanooga, man. Uh, Murray County High School, uh, obviously very proud of you and what you've been able to accomplish. Your brother taking over the high school football program last year into this year. I mean, how proud are you and, and how much satisfaction do you get out of that, seeing him take over what your father was able to, able to build and, and how often do you communicate with him and the folks back there at Murray County and, and, and what they're doing down there? Yeah, you know, my mom um, is actually at the house right now helping out keeping the kids, but... Um, she still lives in the same house, you know, and certainly for Kurt to get an opportunity to go back and be the, high, the head coach there at Murray County High was, you know, a unique opportunity. But, um, you know, I, I think um, that place is in the fabric of who I am, right? I mean, the things, the people I've met, the things I learned, uh, it's a tough blue collar community, you know, farmers, carpet mill workers. Um, you know, very much a chip on your shoulder to some degree, you know, and I think that my dad was a high school coach there. So uh, I was uh, connected with all people in that community and certainly benefited from it. So very proud of Kurt uh, and certainly, you know, mom obviously loves the place and still lives right there in the same house. So uh, Chathworth, Georgia is uh, who I am, if that makes sense. Right side, third row. Sure. Billy Jones, KCOU, Columbia, Missouri. Coach, I'm curious, you know, you built your teams for a long time on power football on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you run for over 200 yards a game this year. Only two games you were kept under 100 yards. Have you refined uh, any sort of processes in terms of how you convert that uh, into more wins? Because obviously running the ball is a, a key part. Is there, is there anything you want to add so you can turn all, the, all, those, all those yards into, into more points? Yeah, no, I, I think, um, 
you know, it's, it's a brand of football that we played. You know, it's got us here. You know, I do think that uh, when you evaluate our season last year, consistency is what we're seeking, right? And I think it all really comes down to detail and execution um, throughout the game in all parts of our team, right? Not just offense or how we rush the ball, uh, but special teams, defense. Every facet of our team, I think, is uh, taking things to a different level of detail and discipline. You know, now, we're, we, we want to be a tough football team, and I think that a practice environment uh, that's committed to playing complementary football, uh, there's going to be a physical element to your team, not only because you need to rush the ball, but you've got to be able to stop the run. We all understand the importance of that in this league. So um, we, we're evaluating everything that we do each year, each week, uh, and we'll continue to try to put the best product out there this year, uh, much like we have in the past. Left side, second row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Uh, Coach, what did you learn in your first year in the league in year one, and then what are you kind of hoping to accomplish and, and see in year two? Yeah, no, I think we learned a lot. Um, I think for me it was unique because I'd been out of the league for five years. You know, so you come back into the league, um, you inherit a roster, um, and you have a pulse of where you're at, and then you go play week in, week out. And I think it just really, uh, you kind of calibrate your eye, you know, relative to where we at as a program, uh, what is our roster like, where do we need to go? Um, and I don't think you truly understand that until you're standing on the field with each one of these teams, right? So I think it helped us adjust uh, big picture relative to where we're at as a program and what we need to do to get back um, to where the Gators are a consistent championship contender, right? So I think for me, um, that's my biggest takeaway from year one. Left side, fourth row. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Coach, you, you talked about coming back into the league after a couple of years off. Hugh Freeze returning to the SEC this year as well after coaching at Liberty. Uh, the biggest differences between coaching at the group of five level uh, nowadays in college football versus coaching in the SEC? Yeah, pace of the, the recruiting calendar relative to early signing period and the pace, the sped up evaluation and recruitment process, that's number one, there's without a doubt. Uh, so that's where we've had to adjust, you know, year one to year two. And, and look, I do think we made uh, changes in our workflow. Um, I think that every, we've been able to retain our people, and I think that we have, it's leading to results, right? So um, we've hired really well. We've got a lot of really smart, talented people, some older veterans with wisdom, and then we've got some really young, bright future up-and-comers as well. So I think that's number one on the list. Now, you throw NIL, you throw Portal, uh, those are new variables in the game. Uh, and certainly the combination of those last two creates issues. So uh, three big takeaways year one, those are the three things. Um, we've come up with really good systems for the final two, and I think we've adjusted in terms of workflow and job descriptions for recruiting. Front row, right side. Colton Sully, OU Daily. Coach Dampier, just was wondering your thoughts about OU and Texas joining the SEC next year. And then secondly, um, there's a little bit of parallels between you guys and OU, both the second year. Um, head coaches, uh, both historic programs, both went six and seven last season. Mm -hmm. Just curious if you study them at all and what if you have a relationship with Coach Venables. What was the first question again? Your thoughts on OU and Texas entering the yeah. SEC. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm excited about, you know, I just can't compliment Greg Sankey enough. Um, tried to say it in there, obviously a well-deserved extension, but you know, you, one thing to be on the outside, it's another thing to be on the inside and have a complete grasp of, I mean, we're talking about highly complicated issues here. Um, and he's, he's done his job, man. I mean, the SEC continues to dominate under his leadership, well positioned for the 12-team college football playoff. And I think the SEC is going to benefit from Texas and OU joining the league. You know, automatically the, the strength schedule component goes up. Um, it's unique and that our players are going to have an opportunity to play in, in some of the most historic venues in the history of the game, right? So it makes the SEC better. Uh, therefore, it makes the University of Florida better. On the aisle in the back. 
Corey Labounty with WNSP 105.5 in Mobile, Alabama. Shamar James, all-freshman type SEC performer, academic, all-SEC as well. Talk about his development and growth in his second season and the role he'll be in this Florida defense. You know, Shamar James is one of the young players that I'm really excited about. Uh, Shamar was able to play and contribute to our team and gain some valuable experience in year one. Uh, he is intelligent. He's got great awareness. Um, I think he has character. I think he's a player that within that class he has influence. Um, he's a future star for the Gators. And, um, you know, Shamar showed up last year in early June. You know, he didn't get here until late May, early June. So not only is he going to benefit from that experience, but he's went through this cycle um, all the way back to January, and he's in a much better place right now. So uh, I think he's got a chance to be one of the more impactful young players on our team. And uh, we're really excited about his leadership uh, and the character uh, that he brings to our locker room as well. Two final questions, front row. Rob Brown, Sideline Sports in Memphis. I have Buddy Martin, Franz Beard, Ben Troop on my show every week. And uh, you talk about expectations. You talked about a narrative. I go back to a great quote by Gandhi. I won't allow other people to walk through my mind with their dirty feet. You said you're not going to let other people write your narrative. How in the hell could anybody ever have low expectations for a program like Florida? Well, I think it's important to evaluate things in context, right? Um, you know, we talk a lot about this in recruitment. You know, 2008, the Gators won the national championship. That's 15 years ago, the last time the Gators won the SEC or the national championship, right? So the young people that we're recruiting now, they were one, two, three years old, right? So that's one of the battles that we have is recent success. Um, so um, I do, you know, one of the things I respect about the place is people care, right? Uh, you want a job with high expectations. You want a job where there's alignment, there's commitment, there's resources, and we have that. So uh, we are not lacking in any area at the University of Florida. Our player experience right now is as good as anywhere. Um, and I've been impressed with the caliber of people that we've hired. Uh, and I think as we continue to evaluate and recruit well and you know retain our people, you know, not only the players, but staff. And we have consistency uh, in our process, consistency in our systems, the way we create habits, the values that we teach, uh, the big picture approach relative to our purpose. Uh, if we can keep people at the core of what we do, uh, we got a chance to do something really special here. Final question, front row. Chat Patterson, WRBL in Columbus, Georgia. Coach, to piggyback off an earlier question, you come from a family of coaches, and one of your brothers coaches in our area, Matt Napier at LaGrange High School. What kind of influence did you have on your brothers, and you know what things have you learned from your dad that you've been able to pass on, as well as things you've learned in your current position that you've been able to pass on to your brothers who are coaching in high school? Yeah, you know, we're, we're all a product of being the son of a high school coach. I mean, we grew up in this game and consumed with the game. Um, you know, we're on the sideline. We're in the back of the pickup truck picking players up to go work out. We're in the weight room, equipment room. We're running out to get the tee after the kickoff. I mean, this is what we did, right? And I think the unique thing about my dad's journey was um, late in his life, he changed his perspective, right? I think that... Um, he often would say the game of football is about people, it's about strategy, and it's about competition. And it's really important that you always keep people at the top of that list. If you get to thinking you're going to outsmart everybody or outwork everybody, you're not going to get the long-term result that you want, right? So I think for us as his sons, I think we approach the game uh, with that in mind, right? I think uh, that's the unique thing about the game of football. It closely resembles life. Um, I would say better than anything that's out there. You know, there's a handful of things out there uh, that that may be the case. And I'm just hopeful that, you know, we can keep this great game that we grew up loving uh, and keep perspective uh, and go about things in a way that he would be proud of. Coach, thank you very much. Great job. Thank you.